what's up you guys welcome back to my channel my name is Coco and I love volleyball so today we're gonna do a Q&A I asked you guys to ask me questions about volleyball Coco volley Coco all of that and you guys asked let's get right into it Once again, I love volleyball. I have chronicled a lot of events on my channel about volleyball, so make sure you subscribe and click that bell notification so you're notified every single time I upload. So I have my phone here, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna read some of the questions that you guys asked, the most asked questions, and I'm gonna answer them today so that way we can get more information about volleyball, Coco Volley, all of that. So let's go to some of the questions that you guys asked. This question was asked by Sarah and she asked, how tall do you have to be to play professional volleyball? So with professional volleyball, it is a sliding scale. There are some people who are 5'9", like myself, and go on to play professionally. There are other people who are 6'6", and go on to play professionally. Don't worry too much about how tall you are. Work on developing your skills to be the best volleyball player that you can be. Here's a good question I get often. Is being overweight a problem to play volleyball? No, and don't let anybody tell you that it is. I play volleyball in multiple different body types. When I was really muscular, when I was on the skinny side, when I had a little extra, and you know what? I still loved it at every single stage. It does not matter how much you weigh. There are people that I play with now who are a little bit overweight, and you know what? They still enjoy the game. Volleyball is for everyone. It is a game that everyone can play. We accept everybody. So don't let that stop you. Don't let anything stop you from accomplishing your goals. Okay, this question was asked by Alana Dibble. What position do you play and why? So when I was in high school and in college, I played club in college, I was a middle blocker. I was a middle blocker for the longest. When I first started playing volleyball, that's what I trained as, being a middle blocker. And if you don't know what a middle blocker is, a middle blocker is in the front of the court. So they're in the middle front and they're primarily doing a lot of blocking. So that's what a middle blocker is. Now, when I transitioned outside of college and started playing competitive recreational, which is what I do now, I started being an outside hitter. And when I started hitting more, I realized how much my potential could have been if I had been an outside the whole time. So you guys see me play a lot. I do a lot. I do setter, I do back row. I'm doing everything now. But my favorite position to play is outside hitter. Even though I've been working on my sets lately. Y'all see that? I've been working on my sets. Okay, here's another question that I see often by Jessica Wen. How to convince your parents to let you play? And I'm actually gonna make a video on how to convince your parents to let you play. But here's one tip I can share before that. I would sit down with your parents and I would show them a video of volleyball. I would take them to a game of volleyball and tell them how important it is for you to try something, get that teamwork, get that team bonding, stuff like that. But there will be a video coming on that. This question was asked by Ashley Rogers. What's being on a team like? Oh my gosh, the feeling of being on a team is just indescribable. You are with a community of people who are achieving the same goal. So when you're on a team, I find that when you're on a team, you have, it's like so much more than friendship. It is, it's literally a bond. You know how you have people do the team bond? It is a team bond. Now, when I was coaching, I coached varsity for some time. When I was coaching, I like to make sure that I have team bonding activities and we play games in practice to further encourage the team to get together and create that tight-knit bond. It's just so hard to describe. It's, it's something that I definitely want all of you guys to experience. And we are on a team here at Coco Valley. We're team, high five. High five, this is a team. But being on a team is a really good feeling. This was Anna Montesinos, and she asked, how do you spike well if the net is high? I love your videos, you're an inspiration. Thank you, Anna. Now, I play often on a men's net, so when you guys see me do volleyball vlogs, I'm playing on a men's net, and if you don't know what a men's net is, a men's net is seven foot 11, so it's really, really high, okay? It's high. Now, when you when the net is high and you're trying to spike, or let's say you're on the shorter side and you're trying to spike, the best way to do it is it's all about the angle, okay? So if I'm gonna spike this way, 
The ball's gonna go straight into the camera, knock the camera down, we're gonna have a pity party. If the net is up and I spike a little bit more upward, I'm more likely to get the ball over the net. So I'm not saying raise your arm to the ceiling and shoot it up, but I'm saying you might wanna change the angle of your hitting arm. Okay, does that make sense? Talon Garcia asks, how long did it take to learn your serve? Now I know a lot of you guys, we are still talking about the serve and we're working on our serve. We're trying to get our serve over so it's super nasty, but there are different types of serve. When I first learned how to do my standing serve, believe it or not, the first time I did a standing serve, I hit it so hard it went to the back wall. I am like really strong, you guys. You probably have seen from my spikes. I got that, I got that wicked arm. So it went all the way to the back wall. So for me, my challenge in serving was getting it in and not hitting it out. So I didn't have as much trouble getting the serve over. It was more keeping it in. It would just go right past the end line. So it took me a while to get the snap the wrist and I had a bad case of noodle arm. When I was hitting the ball, it just went like, I had a bad case of noodle arm. So me, for me focusing on getting the end, it probably took, because I started playing volleyball when I was a sophomore in high school, it probably took a year to, until I was a junior on varsity to really understand the, the flick of the wrist, try to get my wrist action in. Glowing Gummy Bears, I like that name, they said, do you have to get three hits? Is it better if you do? So traditionally in volleyball, you want to do bump, set, spike. Now sometimes it doesn't happen like that. Sometimes the ball is so close to the net, you're like, I can't do anything with it, I'm just gonna set it over. But traditionally, bump, set, spike. So three hits is the maximum you can hit on each side. Do you have to get three hits every time? No, but it is best to utilize each and every chance you get to create an effective attack plan. For example, if the ball comes over, they, let's say they send a free ball over. They send the free ball over, the ball comes over, they, we bounce it and it comes up. I don't wanna immediately send it back over a free ball. If I got somebody who can hit, I wanna try to set them up. So you want to try to set up the hitters or set up people who are effective at hitting to get a good point. We wanna to try to get a kill, you guys. That's the, that's the main goal. Neff Luna asks, how many volleyballs do you have? By the way, I love you and thank you. Ah, thank you, Neff. So I have, nine volleyballs i have nine volleyballs and right now i'm waiting to get my molten flex tastic volleyball Ooh, oh my gosh i want it so bad that's a volleyball i'm waiting on getting and then i will have 10 volleyballs but i have nine volleyballs and a lot of them are used for training purposes when i do private training sessions or coaching madison williams said did you play on the school team in your school yes i started playing volleyball when i was a sophomore in high school the first experience that I had playing volleyball was at a university. I went to one of their summer camps. Let me tell you, I was a fish out of the water. Did not know what I was doing at all. And then I went on to play junior varsity, and then I went on to varsity, and then I went to play club in college for three and a half, almost four years. And then I went on to play competitive recreational. And now I play co-ed, and I like co-ed so much because, like I said, if you guys don't read my blog, I write blog posts a couple times a week. You should check it out, it's free. And my blog post, I was talking about how I like co-ed because it's, volleyball's a social sport. It is so much fun to be social with others, to get to meet others, to talk to others, and create friendships. A lot of the friendships that I've had in my life have been primarily from volleyball because it is a group of people that are reaching a common goal and that's what a team is. Okay, so Unicorn Sparkle said, should you get, try to get in shape before tryouts? Yes, as soon as you know you're gonna try out, you should immediately start working towards trying out. So most programs, club, high school, middle school, they have conditioning periods when they have a conditioning season before volleyball, not the off season, but like a month before, usually during the summertime. Now when I was in high school and I first started, let me tell you, I was always at that conditioning. Every single time I was at that conditioning, lifting the weights, running, getting my body ready because if you guys didn't know this, during the season, you shouldn't be trying to learn something new. You should be trying to learn what you need to know in the off season so that way when we get to the season, we're just we're just super nasty and we're like effective and we're just we're just slamming balls. And that's what this channel is for, for you guys to get the skills that you need to flourish because I want you guys to be the best volleyball players in the world. Just I want you guys to chase your dreams, go after your goals, do whatever you want to do, and just go out there and just slay y'all. Just go out there and slay. And that's why I'm here to motivate you to be the best person you can be in just life. Katie Reynolds asks, what positions are there for playing? Are they based on height and weight? Weight, no. Height, 
and unfortunately, yes. So in the front row, traditionally you want people to be be taller because the net is high and you want people who can jump high and block the ball. So I have seen some people, now let me tell you, I have seen some people who are on the shorter side and they get up there and block that ball. So I also don't want that to let that discourage you at all. I want you to try out for the position that you really want to play. Even though people in the front row tend to be taller and people in the back row tend to be shorter, if you want to go out there and you want to be an outside, train for an outside. If you want to learn how to hit, learn how to hit. Do what you want to do, boo. But people in the front tend to be a little bit taller and people in the back tend to be a little bit shorter. Annabelle Hong said, so I have asthma and my dad won't let me play. How can I convince him? So a lot of people have asthma and a lot of athletes have asthma, believe it or not. So at most schools and programs, they have an athletic trainer on hand. And the athletic trainer is notified about any conditions that you have. That's why before school you have to get a physical and that's noted on the physical. I would actually, I would do the same steps that I would learn before when I was talking about how to talk to your parents about letting you play. I would sit down with them, take them to a volleyball game, take them to your team's volleyball game, or let them see volleyball on YouTube and tell them how important it is for you to build that team bonding experience. And I think that that's something that they may be able to understand. So definitely talk to your parents about it. Nineni Nemeni asked, when did you have your first match? Were you nervous? Girl, yes. I was so nervous, oh my gosh, I was so nervous. My hands were shaking, my hands were clammy, my palms were sweaty, I was so nervous. I had that butterflies in the stomach, you know that almost feel like you're gonna vomit. I was nervous, okay? Do I get nervous now? Not so much, sometimes, sometimes. It's natural, it's natural. But yes, I was extremely, extremely nervous. Now let me tell you guys what I did when I was nervous. So I'm gonna have a mini snorry time. My first time playing in the first time in a game. Are you close to the camera? The first time when I was playing in a game, I blocked a serve. Can you believe it? I was so ner I was so nervous. I was, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was going on. I had never played before. They had just like throw me in the fire. I was so nervous. And that's why I don't want you guys to be thrown in the fire like I was because whoo, I was nervous. Okay, Sophia Nichols asked, how long does it take to be advanced? So that is actually an individual question. It really depends on your skill level when you start and how fast you can progress. There are people who've been playing for years and they feel like they're not advanced. And it's, it's really on a personal scale. For me now, I feel like I'm advanced in some aspects, but there's other things that I wanna learn because every day you learn something new. And there's things that I wanna work on. So that's why you guys see me working on stuff. So it really depends on you. What is your definition of advanced? Queen. I'm gonna say, Queen. Queen asks, any tips on how to get the coach to like you before making the team? So, one of my tips in a previous video that I said was, when you're trying out for volleyball, the first thing you need to do when you go to the tryout is introduce yourself to the coach. Go up to the coach and say, hi, my name is Coco, I am so excited to be here, thank you for holding this tryout, I hope to do my best. Something as simple as that can go a long way. They are gonna be so flattered. They're gonna be like, wow, she really took initiative. And that just shows valor. That just shows valor. It just shows respect. And it also shows that you really want this. So go out there and just say, hey, my name is Coco and I really wanna try out. During, co during practices, be the first one there and be the last one to leave. Work hard, show that hustle, show that you want it, show that you got that hustle spirit and you want it. Hustle, guys. AJ at Max said, have you ever gotten hurt while playing volleyball? Love your videos, keep it up. Yes, I have. I actually got hurt yesterday, believe it or not. I was blocking a ball and I put my hands up to block my ball from my face. I'll teach you how to do this. And it was so quick. I was like almost there and it stopped and this hand bent all the way back. It's okay now, it was my left. It's okay now. But yes, I've been hurt a couple of times. Nothing too bad. Actually, I have twisted my ankle a number, a number of times. That's why you should wear ankle braces, y'all. Twist my ankle, I've got floor burn. Um, I hurt my back once. Um, I have an impingement. 
and a shoulder, which is like a tightness in my swinging arm. So yeah, I've hurt, my, hurt myself a couple of times and that's why we need to practice injury prevention in order to make sure we don't get really, really hurt. Because one of the number one injuries for both female and male in volleyball and jumping related sports is ACL tear. And that is something I do not want for anybody here at all because Coming back from an ACL tear is difficult, not impossible, but difficult, and I want us to practice the proper injury prevention so we don't get hurt. Emperor says, what is the hardest move you learned on volleyball? Okay, so the hardest move that I've learned thus far while playing volleyball, I would say, hmm. When I was younger, when I was you guys' age, I think the hardest thing that to, for me was spot play serving. And spot play serving is serving at a specific target across the court multiple times in a row. So spot plays, my coach had a drill where she would put cones all over the court and they're different color cones and she'll say serve to red, serve to blue, serve to green, serve to yellow. And that was difficult for me because it was on a time crunch and when you missed it, you took a lap. So that was hard for me. Now at this point in my life, I would say the hardest thing for me is sometimes it can be difficult now when you play with guys who are like six seven and they're hitting at the ball at 90 upward 90 miles an hour i can see serve receive could be hard um serve receive could be hard or receiving a spike over a block that bounces off the block that is difficult especially if it's something that's so out of your way, that can be hard. All right, you guys, I hope that you like this video. I'm gonna try and go to that thread that I had and that I asked you guys the questions. To answer the rest of you guys' questions, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.